Hello and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, hello! My name is Rose Wrights and I write and narrate Miraculous Ladybug fan fiction. If you have missed the previous 18 parts, I will link them in the description box below. I had so much fun writing this chapter, so I hope you enjoy Happy With You. Chapter 19. Partners. Are you ready yet? Lila clicked her tongue with impatience as Chloe primped in the bathroom mirror. You cannot rush perfection, Lila, but it looks like you wouldn't know anything about that. <laughs> a chortle escaped her lips as she went back to applying her vanilla-scented lip gloss. Lila, rolling her eyes, said, Whatever. I'll be glad when this is over so I can go back to ignoring you. She crossed her arms and turned away. Uh, likewise. Chloe looked like she was almost done as she made sassy, kissy faces at herself in the mirror. Do you even remember the plan? Of course I do. What kind of fool do you take me for? But just so I know you remember, tell me again. Lila so wanted to facepalm herself big time. This princess was going to be the death of her. Lila spoke slowly, enunciating every word. We will separate Adrian and Marinette. You will greet him like your annoying self would. Lila continued speaking through Chloe's obvious protests. Then I will hide with my camera. When I'm in position, you will kiss Adrian. When I get the photo, their stupid relationship will be over and his reputation will be ruined. She flashed a devilish grin. Marinette and Adrian entered the courtyard of the school hand in hand. So, what do you think of me and Cat? Marinette giggled. You mean the little Pop-Tart rainbow cat? Adrian said almost defensively. Yeah, you see a lot of Grumpy Cat and Pusheen the cat, but not Nian Cat, and why not? Nian Cat is objectively the best. Besides Cat Noir, I mean. But Nian Cat is a really close second. <laughs> Whatever you say, babe. Marinette nudged him playfully. They continued laughing when Marinette said, How much time do I have before class? She pulled out her phone to answer her own questions. Wow, 20 minutes? I'm going to run to the bathroom. I already miss you. Adrian blew her a kiss. I miss you more. She winked. As she was nearly at the bathroom door, it swung open and Lila's bony shoulder plowed into Marinette. Ugh, watch it, super klutz Dupeng Chang. Both brats giggled at Marinette's pain, but she strode past them in spite of that. Lila took her position at the top of the stairs. Lens already zoomed, ready to catch the perfect shot of Adrian's betrayal of his little girlfriend. Adrikins! Chloe threw her arms around the blonde boy, carefully plotting how she wanted to do this. This had been normal for her to do, but having a girlfriend made her touching him at all feel extremely awkward. Uh, hey, Chloe. He slowly backed away from her, but Chloe only tightened her grip. You know how we have been best friends since we were in diapers, Adrikins? She batted her long, fake eyelashes. How could I forget? Adrian muttered. He had noticed the mob of students subside, probably going to class. In a way, we are perfect for each other, don't you think? That was it. Adrian grabbed her arms, honestly, probably a little too roughly, and placed them back at her side. Chloe, look. I don't know what you're trying to pull, but I have a girlfriend. You know that. If you'll excuse me. He went to walk past her, but the conniving blonde girl reached out her hand to grab his wrist. I'll have to try another angle, she thought. I need him to trust me and my intentions. Adrian, I'm sorry. He gave her a look, his eyebrows shooting skyward. He has known Chloe, like she said, since they were in diapers. She was never one to apologize for anything. She continued, You've been a great friend to me, and, well, I've kind of been a brat. To everyone. Shocked was an understatement. Was she actually sorry? He had never seen her so heartfelt. He felt a pang of guilt for having been unkind to her. She was his oldest friend, after all, and until he came to Francois Dupont High School, she was his only friend. If she wanted to become a better, kinder person, of course he would help her. Chloe, thank you. You're my friend, and you'll always be my friend. 
I'm here for you. He smiled warmly, taking her shoulders in his hands. Her smile matched his. She felt an opportunity arising. Oh, Adrikins! She embraced him, smelling his cologne waft around her. He hugged her back, but nothing could prepare him for what was to come. She looked at him, placing her freshly manicured hands on his shoulders. Thank you for always believing in me and being such a great friend. Not just to me, but to everyone. Her internal monologue was groaning. Ugh, these words were so gross. She couldn't believe she was even saying them. Ridiculous. Utterly ridiculous. She would never grovel or pay anyone compliments of any kind. Oh well. As long as Adrian believed these words sleeping from her lying lips. Thanks, Chloe. His sentence was interrupted by Chloe's lips landing on his own unexpectedly. She cupped his face, not quite romantically. It was harsh, more like a grab. She was stronger than she looked as she desperately smashed his face to hers in a kiss that would remind you of the Dementors from Harry Potter. His arms were careful not to touch her anywhere, just hovering above her skin. Adrian felt his blood run cold. He was drowning in the scent of fake vanilla needing air but forgetting how to breathe. The kiss was brief and only lasted for a few seconds, enough time for Adrian to be in shock and push this blonde soul sucker off of him. When their lips parted, Chloe looked at him triumphantly, arms crossed and hip out. She tried not to let the look of horror faze her. In her mind, she was doing what she felt she needed to, but she knew this much. She had lost him. Any chance of being with him? Any chance of actual friendship? That thought tugged at her heart. She ached inside, but it had to be done. Chloe, what were you thinking? Why would you do that? Adrian's voice was low, but surged with anger. You'll see, Adrikins. You'll see. She performed her signature hair flip and ran up the staircase to join Lila, who had been watching events transpire through her camera lens. When Adrian turned in the direction of the restrooms to check on Marinette, there she stood. Her arms were limp at her side, having dropped her book bag. Her eyes brimming with tears. Clearly, she had observed the scene between the two. He rushed over to her, grabbing her shoulders. Marinette, I don't know what you saw, but I am so sorry. She grabbed me and kissed me, and I was shocked. I didn't expect it at all. She was talking about how sorry she was for being rude to everyone, and I let my guard down, but... She didn't mean it. She was trying to come between us. His eyes began welling up as well. Please, Marinette, you have to believe me. You know I would never do anything to hurt you. She stared down at the ground, tears cascading from her eyes. Between gasps of air, she said, I know you wouldn't, or at least that's what I thought. I just, you didn't. Pull away, right away. She turned her back to him. Their surroundings were quiet, except for the sound of Marinette's tears escaping her throat. I need to go. As she began to walk away, Adrian followed her a few steps behind. Alone, please. Breaking into a sprint, Marinette ran out of the doors they entered. Transforming, she flew to her own balcony and sank to her knees, all but screaming not even bothering to detransform. A gentle thump sounded behind her, but she didn't turn. Hey. The familiar voice made her cry even more. It was Cat Noir perching on the rail of the balcony like he had so many times before. Are you okay, milady? He knew she wasn't, but wanted to ask anyway. When she didn't answer, he approached her slowly. She pulled him into an anguished hug. Spots off she whispered. The light flashed a bold pink. Ladybug's red and black costume melted into the pink overall dress Marinette had been wearing at school. Marinette, talk to me. He wrapped her tightly in an embrace, stroking her hair as she weeped into his chest. I, he, she, she didn't know how to begin. How could she? She felt hurt and betrayed. Her throat burned from the never-ending sobs that escaped. 
She attempted to regain her composure. Marinette spoke again, not meeting his gaze. She kissed him. Chloe, and it looked like he kissed her back. The sobs racked her breathing again. Cat Noir was horrified. That couldn't have been further from the truth. It broke his heart to know that that thought plagued Marinette's mind. He had tried to get Chloe off of him. He would never do something like this to Marinette. He loved her. He was in love with her. No! Cat Noir exclaimed at her statement, but at that same moment, he saw the faint purple glow surrounding Marinette. He pulled her away to look at her face as a moth shape appeared over her, which could only mean one thing. Hawk Moth. Hell hath no fury like a woman's scorn. Which is why you, scorn, will have the power to make others feel as worthless and heartbroken as you do. All you have to do is bring me Ladybug and Cat Noir's Miraculous. Do we have a deal? Hawk Moth had been waiting for the day to akumatize Marinette, as she is one of the only people in Paris that has remained untouched. He had done it. Marinette would be his ultimate creation. That is almost too easy, Hawk Moth. She sneered and began to transform. Oh, no, you don't. Cat Noir launched himself to whip behind the now akumatized Marinette. I'll take these. He snatched her earrings and fled the scene as quickly as possible. Great. Now what? he thought as he bounded around Paris. Ladybug is akumatized as a civilian, and yeah, I could destroy the akuma, but without Ladybug, I can't purify it. I can't do anything. Cat Noir stopped on a nearby rooftop to glance around as Marinette, or, uh, Scorn, yelled after him. Alia, she could help me. She knows everything about Ladybug. Cat flew through her balcony, landing in her bedroom, stopping directly in front of her. Uh, hey, Cat Noir, what brings you here? I got an Akuma alert on my phone, and I was about to go check it out. She stopped, noticing the ghost-like expression on his face. What's wrong? Where's Ladybug? She was hesitant, her heart beating into her throat. Fear clutched her heart. Alia, Marinette is Ladybug, and she needs your help. Thank you so much for listening to chapter 19. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to like and subscribe. That would help me out a bunch. I am still currently working on my I Carry Your Heart series, so I haven't forgotten it. Okay, bye! Stay miraculous!